Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we have another episode brought to you by White Mountain Knives. Check them out for all of your knife and EDC needs, and be sure to use the code WSW10 for 10% off your purchase at White Mountain Knives. Now, today we are going to be taking a look at none other than a new Kubi. It's the Kubi Duga, and this might be, this might be the best Kubi I've ever handled. I will let you guys know that at the end of this review. But first, let's take a look at some size comparisons. We have, no, let's do overall specs. How does that sound? Is that okay with you? Yeah, let's do some overall specs. We have an overall length of 8.31 inches with a blade length coming in at 3.66 inches, a blade width of 1.14 inches with a blade thickness coming in at 0.14 inches. Blade material on this guy is D2 with a drop point style blade, a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 4.7 inches with a handle thickness of 0.59 inches. This is a this is a girthy guy. We have a handle width of 1.07 inches, a handle material of G10 with a liner lock, a user of a right hand only tip up carry, a weight coming in at 4.87 ounces, and a price of a very reasonable $58. So not too bad at all when it comes to the price of this guy. And let's take a look at some size comparisons now to see just how big of a knife we have here. Because this is not a small knife at all compared to the QSP Gannett. It's very big. And compared to the Kaiser Justice. Yeah, still big. Not bigger than the Justice, but still a very nice just a just a big knife. I think a lot of people would consider this a big knife. It's not like cold steel big, but I, I wouldn't consider it a medium sized knife. Somewhere in between that, probably medium and large size. Um, but there's those two. And let's take a look at a couple more. Two others of my favorite budget knives. The real steel Rokot. As well as Maybe the best Civivi? I don't know. We'll we'll talk about that later. There's a top 10 list coming up Civivis. But this here is the Civivi Drop Point Brazen. And as you can see, pretty much in line. It's a little bigger than the Brazen and, and a little bigger than the Rokit. But um, as you can see there, I think you know what we're working with now, guys. And let's talk about this blade. This is a very impressive Kubi blade. Definitely the most impressive edge I've seen on a Kubi. We have a big, tough, slicey blade with a very impressive edge coming in at, wait for it, 15 thousandths. 15 thousandths behind the edge. And let me tell you, it cuts like 15 thousandths. Very, very impressive blade. Um, much thinner than any other Kubi I've ever handled. Um, I really love the cutout on this knife. We're going to talk a lot more about it when we get to the action, but this cutout and fuller here, it really adds uh, an element of fidget fun that most knives don't have, or maybe not most, but a good majority of knives do not have. Very, very interesting combo of fuller and cutout here. Now, we also have jimping on the spine of this guy that's on point, and it actually comes out nice and far, too. You know, some blades have, like, half that much. Like, that would be all the jimping. But you get all this jimping on this guy for... You got big hands, guys. This, this would be a decent knife for someone with bigger hands because it's got a lot of jimping. It's got a good amount of width there on the handle to, uh, to get your get your meat paw around so a lot of good things going on there and then you also have a flipper tab that is has that a little kind of it's a it's a little smoothed out it's not quite as aggressive as the spine but really good jimping that um gives you a lot of uh effortless ways to deploy this blade which we're going to talk more about here in just a second but going into the handle and ergos ergos are pretty good but there's one issue. When I'm holding this guy, it the curvature and the handle, that all feels great. There's some milling here that um, I don't know if it really helps a whole lot with the ergos. But it, it, it does. It really does. Especially this area down here. It, it really does help with the pinky, I guess. You kind of have to hold it in your hand as you're thinking about it. But it, you do have a little relief there. And then up here, you kind of feel this with your with your uh, ring finger and middle finger. So kind of interesting ergos, but they do feel good with the exception of this clip. Now, I will say this is a nice looking clip. It's just, it's different. And I kind of appreciate that. 
it, it's it, it it's kind of like a stonewashed satiny finish, but I it's not really the finish either. It's it's more just the overall width and height of this clip. Um, now in and out of the pocket, it works pretty darn good. Um, but when you have it in hand, it's just it, it it kind of hogs the handle in terms of what you're feeling. And it's not a hot spot. I'm not going to call it a hot spot, but it's it's definitely it just protrudes out from the handle from from the rest of the the, the scales and the rest of the handle itself. Um, I don't love that. I don't love it, but for 58 bucks, I mean, you can only complain so much, guys. Um, everything else about the Ergos is really good. I love the grip this G10 has. There is some milling here, as you can see. So it's kind of smooth up here. But as you look down here, there's all sorts of little... I don't know if it's milling or... May, I, I'm assuming it's probably not milling. I'm sure it's probably just some type of like press texturizing or texturization that got pushed on through some type of like hot mold or something. But it gives it some really, really good texture. You have a very solid grip with this knife. Very, very solid grip. Would not worry about this knife slipping out of your hand at all. So very, very nice there. You have some really thick liners. Probably thicker than you really need. Because what they do is they add some weight to the knife. And again, we're talking, you know, 4.87 ounces. That's that's getting up there. It's I mean, it's not something I would, you know, for again, for 58 bucks, I got no problem with it being 4.87 ounces. Um, you kind of get what you pay for in that aspect. But there's no milling. If you look in here, as you can see there, well, there's a little milling. So there is a little, but it's not... There's just one little bit there and one there. There could be, you know, another good chunk there. There could be some on this side. So there's not as much milling as I would like to see. But again, 58 bucks is what it is. But just know that, you know, you're getting you're getting a little heavier knife than you may be used to if you're buying Kaisers and Civivis. This is definitely a little heavier than that. But that's also not the end of the world. And you have very easy access to the liner lock. And I know I mentioned that on basically every knife I review, but to me, that is one of the most important things with a liner lock knife. Um, it's, I mean, right after a, a decent blade and no blade play, that's probably the second or third most important thing because you're going to be using this every time you go to close the blade, you're using that liner lock. And if it's a pain in the butt to get your finger in there, you're not going to want to carry the knife. You're not going to want to use it. Um, you have very easy access. Some people may not like the way that looks, but again, whatever. I can get in there. It works fine. Blade falls just, just great, and you close the blade. So really like how easy it is to get into the liner lock of this guy. Now the action. Let's get to the fun part because the action on this guy is great, and what makes it the greatest, well, not the greatest of all time, but what makes it the greatest Kubi is there's so many ways to deploy it. It is so fun. So you have the flipper that you can either push button, which I always prefer, or you can light switch it. It works just fine. Then you move down to the cutout where you can very easily kick it out with your middle finger, or you can kick it out with your index finger by <laughs> getting a good grip onto that protruding clip that I was talking about, but that works very well. And then you have the fuller, which you can actually middle or pinky, pinky, pinky finger flip. That's fun. So I have everything off, just the pinky here. Ah, you kind of have to give it a little rest. And it takes a little getting used to because it's weird. There's not many blades you deploy with your pinky. But yeah, it works and it's kind of fun. And you can also use your ring finger. Pops out really nice with your ring finger. You can literally use any finger on your hand to deploy this blade with your pinky, with your ring finger, with your middle finger. And your middle finger, you can do either the fuller, which works really well, or the cutout works very well. Well, you're just going back. It, 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 the fidget factor of this is almost never ending. Then you can go upside down and you can index flip it down with your, with your index finger. Of course, I'm at a really weird angle trying to do this, but bottom line, guys, this cutout in this fuller is fantastic. There are so many ways to deploy this blade. It's very smooth. It's running on bearings. Blade centering is absolutely perfect. This is a fantastic knife. 
Um, it has everything you want in a budget knife. Now, I can't say I love D2, but it holds a good edge. It's just, it's it, you know, the, the corrosion resistance is not good. That's my only knock on D2, in all honesty. Um, it's it's kind of hard to sharpen, too. But, again, I really strop my knives more than anything. I'm not going to do a whole lot of sharpening. So that's not necessarily the end of the world to me. But, I mean, again, for 58 bucks, I'm not going to say one bad thing about D2. Um, especially when it's, it's kind of... It's, it's kind of going away a little. You don't see it quite as much. But for as fun as this knife is, for as nice of a blade as it is, and for as fidgety as it is, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with D2. But guys, this, ring finger, boom! It flips out. It's so much fun. This is a great, great knife. Not just as a fidget knife, but also as a heavy user with that very thin, slicey edge. Very, very, very impressive knife, guys. Overall thoughts on this is very, very good. I'm not even gonna put it down as I'm closing out here. I'm just gonna keep fidgeting with it because it really is that good. Listen, listen to it. Oh, it's got it's got pretty good acoustics too for a $58 knife. Oh, that, that had an extra good little clink to it. I'm a fan, guys. You gotta get yourselves a knife that you can flip out with your pinky. That's for sure. You don't see that very often. You have it here. Very much worth checking out, guys. The Kubi Duga. The Duga, you guys got to do the Duga. I do officially approve of this knife. I think it's fantastic. Definitely one I would recommend. Let me know what you guys think. You can pick these up at White Mountain Knives and don't sleep. They have blade shapes. They have handle colors. They have all sorts of different things going on with this Duga design. So hop over to White Mountain Knives. Check it out. Pick yourself up one. Let me know what you think. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. And until the next one, I'm out.